Are you struggling to break teams down? Maybe you're conceding too many late goals. Or perhaps you're just a little overwhelmed by all the different player and team instructions available at your fingertips. Thankfully, RDF Tactics is here to offer a helping hand to take you from a team full of Sunday League cloggers to the sort of side that now plays silky smooth total football. RDF Tactics, Thank you. welcome. How are you guys doing? So, Steve, I'm going to address this before we get started, right? You need help with a tactic from a Fiorentina side that is currently sat top of Serie A and unbeaten. <laughs> I want this tactic. I don't want the bit that's not working. So this is more of, a, um, here? more of a tune-up, a tactical tune-up, um, as we're going to hear in a second uh, for this one, because there are certain things that I'm, I'm, I'm just like... When it works, it works. But when it doesn't, it very much does not. So uh, this is this is an example of what will be more of a tune-up from RDF. But uh, obviously, in the future, we could we, we have a whole range from uh, tweaks like this to massive, complete kit car rebuilds um, that we want to hear from you guys. Excellent stuff. So yes. RDF, do you want to show us what Steve's working with, and then tell us where he's going right, but more importantly, oh, absolutely, where he's going Let's wrong? Get stuck in. So what we do have here is a 4-2-4, very attacking by the way. At the back four, we've gotten two inverted wing backs, but one's on attacking, one's on defending on the right hand side. So it, there is a slight focus on the attack on the left hand side. The two wingers as well on the left hand side, we do have an inside forward on attack, an inverted winger on attack on the right hand side. In midfield, sort of a double pivot, we've got a deep line playmaker and an advanced playmaker on attack so two playmakers in the middle something that i might look to change straight away lastly up top we do have an advanced forward and a deep line forward up top both on attacking duties of course the advanced forward looking to break the lines and the deep line forward trying to connect play this is what i'm this is what i'm trying to gather from the tactic at the moment especially with the in possession instructions as well there is a lot of focus in the middle attacking width fairly narrow underlap both on the left and the right not sure how that inverted wing back on defender is going to underlap because he's supposed to defend and then we're going to focus play through the middle as well playing out from the back it's it's very attack heavy we do have the counter press. We do have the counter movements when the possession has been won out of possession as well. Press, trigger press more often, higher line of engagement. So I do want to provide more of a balance with this tactic. It is very attack heavy, high risk, high reward. You may win 7-0 one game. You might lose 7-2 the next. So we're trying to add some balance into this tactic. That's what we're going to try and achieve today. And that actually, you've hit the nail on the head of exactly the problem that I've been having with with this tactic sometimes. So this is specific to playing in Serie A with, with the guys, people who haven't played in Serie A before. It's a really fun um, division to play in, but it does. You do face a lot of teams who have the classic catenaccio um, Italian tactic of, like, of essentially a back five with win backs, two deep midfielders, and they basically lump it long to the sort of three forwards which means if you're an attacking side you've really got to, you know you've, you've basically got to get through a whole lot of players um so yeah when it works it really really works uh but when it doesn't it it's sort of like trying to refine uranium a little bit <laughs> <laughs> yeah i could i could see that as yeah. well. i'm already what's, what what i think as well for listeners as well i will say is that i'm already starting to bristle a little bit when Aaron's like this is this i'm like you know, the two playmakers is like, you're going to do what? So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. But anyway, this is good because I'm learning. So um, help me fix it. Yeah, no problem. And one thing before even checking the data hub, I've noticed you're forcing the opposition on the outside. You don't have much protection out there as well, especially with the inverted wing backs on attack. He's, he's going to look to play in the middle a lot, even though slightly when they're defending, they act as traditional fullbacks. But you're always thinking about transition as well. So when you're attacking, that inverted wing back is not in a normal fullback position. This is where you could also be conceding a lot of your goals. So I will go to the data hub and I will check your last five matches. And you do have some issues. Well, they are getting a lot of shots in your penalty box. And if I go to your team report as well, check where you are conceding from. We can see the assist location nine goals so most of your goals are actually coming from crosses so again you are forcing them in that area but you don't have much protection in that area you could just be allowing them to cross 
and that is not a good idea. <laughs> so you're saying I'm, I'm I'm inviting them into my most vulnerable part? Yeah, of the pitch. which is essentially a trigger press anyway. You kind of want to invite. It's, it's, that's how you trap your opponents, but you also have to have a plan. You're kind of trapping your opponents in the area where you have nobody there. Okay. Um, <laughs> so how would you look to fix that then? How would you look to fix that then, Aaron? If he's got an inverted wing back, would you change it to, to a standard wing back or would you change it to a full back or would you maybe look to show them yeah, back so outside again? Like we said, it, the tactic is still working. He is first. He is winning games, but we're trying to provide a better balance. So what I would do possibly is change that inverted wing back on attack to support they're fairly doing the same thing, but he's got more of a defensive responsibility. But also, with your defensive width, I wouldn't necessarily force them on the outside. I would leave it in the middle, and then I will see how the game is progressing. Sometimes I might actually try to force them on the inside. And you can kind of, because a lot of your attacking play is through the middle as well. And you may gain a little advantage. If you do win the ball back in those central areas, you can then break in those central areas as well. So, so it's also worth, sorry to interrupt, in mate, but it's um, worth pointing out here as well in terms of for, for people listening to the podcast, uh, audio-wise only without the video, that yeah. often we talk about when we're tweaking tactics that it's like you move this guy into this position or change his duties on the map where you see the dots, basically. But a lot of the yeah. tweaks that you're making here are on that left-hand side of the screen within your in-possession yeah. box, out-of-possession box um, sections that then you click on them and then you get a different screen, right? Yeah. The, now I've looked at the out of possession, I do want to look at the in transition as well, because this is where you could be getting hurt, especially in a 4 2 4. Counter press, I'm not necessarily sure it's needed. It is something that I would look to tweak as well. Possibly just remove the counter press. You don't necessarily have to use a regroup because, again, that's not what you want to do. You don't want to fall back into your position. You want to be on that front foot. But counter pressing, it's you're adding a lot of risk out of possession, especially in your transition. Using a four two four, you could be leaving a lot of gaps. So a lot of the high quality teams, such as Zebra, such as Inter Milan, they could punish you on that break if you're trying to counter press. You could be leaving gaps. So when possession has been lost, that is also something that I'm looking to tweak. Just remove the counter press and you're just reducing that defensive risk lastly in possession i know there is a focus to play through the middle through those central areas but possibly too much focus is happening here because you do have the focus play through the middle you do have the underlap on the left underlap on the right and then for your attacking width you do have fairly narrow so a lot of things are happening in the middle but i think something that is not really talked about much is unpredictability in attack. You don't want always the same things happening. And you kind of, I do want that, I do want to keep the same ideas, but just add that little unpredictability. And that could happen just removing the focus play through the middle because now sometimes your attacking play could happen out on those flanks and it could allow and just free up some responsibility from your central players as well. So that's a really interesting point, um, Aaron, in terms of like the. In my head, anyway, it was like you're on the bits that we spoke about a second ago, the in possession bits where yeah. you have the red and the green, etc. In my head, it either had to be red or green. I hadn't really thought yeah. about the kind of fact that there is a middle option, isn't there, which is sort of the balance between the two. So, yeah. as, you, as as a you know, in the in possession section now, it's sort of the focus play down the left, down the right, down the middle, are just sort of no color at all, yeah. really. So that's going to make it more unpredictable. Yeah, because you don't really have a set focus. Whereas if you're focusing through the middle, I'm guessing you can imagine it like a real life football match. If a team is focusing through the middle for the first 45 minutes, you're just going to bring your boys in at halftime and look, this is where they're trying to attack. And then you kind of sort of your own tactics and the other team could come become then pre preactive. And then the other team can sort of be reactive and kind of nullify your attack and play whereas if you've got some unpredictability the team will know you are trying to focus through the middle you do have inside forwards inverted wingers you've got two playmakers in the middle so your team does know you are trying to attack in those central areas but at times your inside forward might just want to stay out wider collect the ball he can dribble down the byline he can cut inside same to your inverted winger so it's not always the same movements always the same patterns you do want to add some unpredictability in your tactic you mentioned earlier as well the fact that i've got two playmakers in there and this is something you would change yes um yes what would you do so one way you can check this as well, for those who are listening on the podcast, on your tactics green, on the tactic crayon, there is a little analysis button. Now, when you click this analysis button, 
a lot of dots and boxes comes up and you can kind of see the areas where you are weak in, the kind of areas that you're strong in. Now for a tactic that is looking to focus through the middle, trying to build up through the middle, you don't really want many red boxes in the middle as well. So what I've done actually is changed your DLP to a central midfielder on support. And what you could do in the play instructions as well, because something that is good about the DLP is that he holds his position. Now in a 424, you kind of want your double pivot. You kind of want some solidity. Solidity. You kind of, kind of want to be strong defensively in the middle. So for my central midfielder, I'm just going to ask him to hold his position similar to a deep line playmaker. But what we don't have is the focus, not always looking to collect the ball because you've got your advanced playmaker to do that and he can create in those advanced areas. Kind of something that was working when I'm looking at your player ratings is your advanced playmaker that's doing really, really well on the creative side. So I don't want to remove that, but I do want to add some kind of, I don't know, you don't want two playmakers in the middle, basically, for me anyway. And the analysis now as well, you are kind of strong in those areas. You can see now my player, Ivan Illich, He's got a high positive influence in that middle area and that is exactly what we want. And just then again, uh, Aaron, where would we find the in the screen that we're on where we can see all the dots, see the, the, the main yeah. tactic screen that you open up when you look at your, your tactics tab on the left hand side of the screen. Um, how do we get to those player instructions there? Yeah, so when it <clears> comes to changing players instructions, all you've got to do is quite literally click on that player on your tactic creating screen. So for an example, I do have my central midfielder Illich here, a central midfielder on support. I'm just going to click on him and then his instructions pop up slightly to the right. You can click the edit button and then voila, you've got a beautiful screen and you can add some instructions, which is a good thing for a central midfielder. A player like a central midfielder that doesn't really come with hard coded instructions. A hard coded instruction is basically something that really defines role. So for an example, an advanced playmaker already has to take more risks because that is what he's supposed to do, create chances. Whereas a central midfielder, you kind of got your blank canvas and you can kind of create the sort of play that you want. And what we're trying to create in central midfield for our central midfielder on support is kind of someone that just holds his position at all times in central midfield, which is a good thing. If you do lose the ball, you've got a player in central midfield at all times. Excellent stuff. I think that's pretty in depth to be honest <laughs> um you know what as i said i said at the start I, I would have taken this tactic every single day of the week but i'm now <laughs> looking going oh there is flaws there is flaws um rdf yes. incredible analysis um for those people who obviously are listening to the podcast we have a, a video aspect as well so there will be some video elements of this up on youtube so go and check it out if you want to visibly go and see what uh, Aaron's done to the tactic and how he tweaks it um, that will be excellent to go and have a watch over there we'll put the link in the show notes in the description um, also as well if that's whetted your appetite and you've looked at your tactic and thought you know what there's a couple of things that are just misfiring a little bit and maybe I need to have a little a little tweak of my own then feel free to get in touch with us drop either myself or RDF a tweet so it's at Tony Jameson for myself it's at RDF Tactics for RDF, send us a screenshot of the tactic, but more importantly, tell us what's wrong. Tell us what's not quite working. Don't just send us a tactic and say, this is fantastic. Send us what we need to look at, because this is where RDF does his homework and comes into his own. So of course, as I said, do send those in, and we'll look forward to analyzing some more in the Tactics Garage next week.